Most of these dogs are very strong. Uh, they will rip flesh, and some have strong enough mouths that they can break bones. Hey! This military working dog in training is practicing controlled aggression. In a matter of months, they'll be ready to be deployed to one of the many U.S. military bases across the globe. But before they were powerful enough to bring down a full-grown human, they started out like every other dog does. It's kind of remarkable to say that there's any aspect of public security or national defense that relies on animals, but it's the truth. There are about 1,600 military working dogs currently serving across every branch of the United States military. And they all started here, at Lackland Air Force Base in San Antonio, Texas. Insider spent two days with the 341st Training Squadron, observing both dogs and handlers at various stages of training. Stay. Pinpoint. However many we produce, it seems like we, we, we can never get military working dogs out fast enough to meet the demands of the Department of Defense because they're just such a vital asset to everything we do. Several hundred dogs are in training at any given time, which takes about 120 days to complete and is split into two blocks, detection training and patrol training. Patrol training is teaching a dog how to essentially chase after a suspect that we're trying to apprehend who is uncooperative and controlling that dog and their aggression. So it's a non-lethal or less than lethal option for military members that defend installations or secure installations to use and apprehend suspects. Yeah. Good. But before they learn to chase down a suspect, the dogs have to perfect their obedience training. Good, yes. We want to have a good foundation in obedience because Down. those commanded positions, good. the sits and the downs, they need to have those uh, proficient before we can start asking for this in a higher level of stimulus. So if I were to just tell her, sit, she's not there yet. Sit, and I give her that, she's able to do it. Yes. <laughs> so the way that we teach them is that they all do it in anticipation of a reward. We give, we use marker training where we end up saying yes when we can mark whatever behavior we want at the precise times. So this is Greta and she's a sweetheart. She looks like an old lady. She's not old, I promise you. I've been working with her maybe for about two weeks now. So far right now I've been working stability with her where she's able to maintain position whenever I walk out to end a leash. Down. Good girl. And then the part that I've been working recently, sit. Good. Is getting her to sit from the down. Yes. Up. The dogs are also taught how to conquer the obstacle course or confidence course. Crawl. Heel. The general purpose is just getting them comfortable with going over certain obstacles. So to simulate stuff when these guys go and work for police departments, like we have one of the obstacles that simulates a window, narrow areas going upstairs or over, some sort of barrier to go and chase down a suspect. Once the dogs have a solid foundation in obedience training, they're ready to move on to the controlled aggression phase of patrol training. Isaac, out, good, sit teaching a dog to show aggression, especially when it's on demand. It starts with this dog's breeding, this dog's background, coming from parents for generations that were bred to be this type of dog. The Department of Defense uses breeds like Belgian Malinois, Dutch Shepherds, and German Shepherds that are between one and three years old. We're looking for a well-balanced, environmentally sound dog that does not have issues for fearfulness or timidity. We're looking for a strong, confident dog that also likes to use its nose for hunting. We're looking for a confident bulldog that's willing to bite and defend its handler if need be. 
Roughly 400 dogs are purchased for the program every year, mainly from Europe. The rest come from the department's breeding program at Lackland. We started the program in 1998. It's basically a contingency plan. The idea is that since we obtain the vast majority of our dogs overseas, something might happen to interrupt our supply of military working dogs. So in 1998, we began this uh, sm rather small-scale breeding program to establish an organic ability on our own to breed and develop military working dogs. The program rears the puppies until they're six weeks old, at which point they're fostered out to homes in the local community until they're seven months old. Seven months is the first age at which I can apply a test to the puppies and determine whether or not they are good material as military working dogs, they're, that their behavior expressed at that time predicts how they're going to behave as adults. <coughs> puppies that meet the program's standards are brought back to Lackland to prepare for the military working dog course. This is what we would call the beginning stages of controlled aggression, where our dogs are taught how to apprehend people. A lot of it's instinctual. It's based mainly on prey drive. A dog's natural instinct is to chase them and grab stuff. Uh, so we play off of, off of their drives. The puppies are tested one final time when they reach one year old and 30 to 50 ultimately enter the military working dog course every year, where they'll continue to build on skills like controlled aggression. What we're training for is the situation where a military working dog handler in the field would have to apprehend a suspect using a military working dog. What we train, we call it the six phases. And initially, we do the field interview, which is when someone approaches the dog and it shows that the dog can be stable, maintain position, and you know not attack just any random person that comes up to talk to you. And then we move into the running bite or the pursuit and attack. So this is a bite sleeve. Basically, it's just a tool that we use to teach the dogs how to bite a target area, i.e. the arm. This sleeve has a little bit of leather and some foam on the inside. And then on the outside, like the burlaps to cover it. So these ones provide a lot of protection. This, this one, you really don't feel much. They're biting more of the material than your actually arm. If you feel anything, it's more just a slight pressure. Most of these dogs are very strong. Uh, they will rip flesh. <laughs> um, and some have strong enough mouths that they can break bones. Obviously, if you're running and the dog is chasing after you at full speed and jumps up, grabs a hold of the arm, takes you to the ground, there's a whole lot of other injuries that may come along with that. But any of those options, I would argue, are still better than lethal force or even some other less than lethal options that we have to offer. The dogs are also trained to stand down from an attack if they're called off by their handler. Good, okay. The capping of the, that drive is the hardest part because you're putting their favorite thing in the world and you're saying, don't touch this. Finally, the dogs are trained to maintain position while their handler pats down the suspect. Nice, and be ready to attack if the suspect makes any sudden or aggressive movements. When the dog is coming at me, I definitely feel an adrenaline rush. I've done a lot of like extreme sports and I would definitely say catching dogs is when my adrenaline is at an all time high. You're the field! Find him. Patrol training also includes scouting exercises where dogs are taught to search for a suspect, both in a building and in the woods. What you got, mama? The way that odor works is if he's the source right there, the way the scent will come out is kind of like a giant cone. So you'll start to see the dog's bracket get big to smaller to smaller to smaller to smaller. Then she gets, boom, source. And from there, it's on us to say, hey, you found him. 
give that challenge and also give the suspect the last chance to give up per se. If not, we send the dog in. You're the fifth. Come out, Mercy, my dog. Get him. Oh. The dog's ability to search for and locate a scent out in the field is honed during the first block of their training. Yes. Which is focused on detection. Using training aids filled with trace elements of explosive materials or narcotics, the dogs are trained to detect an array of odors. Trainers utilize classical conditioning to hone each dog's natural detection capabilities. The dogs we observed were between one and two years old. It's all about pairing an odor with a reward system. So the dog relates this reward with that odor. And of course, to do that, the dog has to have value for the reward. So no matter what, if it thinks I'm hiding that ball, it's gonna search and search and search until it finds that ball. And it's just pairing of the odor on top of that. Through repetition, the dogs learn that finding a source of odor means they'll get rewarded with their toy. Once a dog forms that association between the odor and their toy, they're ready to move on to the next step in their training. This room is filled with boxes containing either nothing, a novelty odor, or the odor the dogs are trained to find. at its basic form, uh, odor it dissipates. So the dog is picking it up at its weakest area and it's following it to its strongest point. And then they're going to bracket it back and forth and follow where odor is until they finally get to the source. When the dog finds the source of the odor, they're trained to give a final response, going into a sit or down position. Eventually, they're going to have to work as a team with their handler, and then the handler is going to have to see that change of behavior. So if the dog were to move, it's gonna be harder for the handler to make that determination that odor is actually there. Once the dogs are proficient in searching for odors in the box room, they move on to larger environments, including vehicle parking lots and warehouses. Bronco, check. Our voices are one of the most important things that we can utilize in order to persuade, ask, or tell the dog what it is that we need them to do. When we first make a presentation on order, we're trying to kind of ask the dog to come there. So, hey, check here, check here, look here. Kind of that pitch of, it's fun, it's exciting, come to me, it's gonna be more fun. Hey, check. And then after that, if they're still not coming towards us, then we start kind of using more of that command voice that, hey, check, check right here, up here, look here. Bronco, check. So that's mainly those voices, and it's just something that with experience, it gets more and more fine-tuned to be that much more meaningful to the dog. Handlers are trained to look out for any behavioral changes in their dog that could indicate they've picked up on a scent. Aggressive response. His change of behavior, he'll do kind of like a head snap. Whenever he picks up odor, he'll snap his head. And he's very sporadic, typically running around very hyper, but he gets a little more focused when he gets on odor. Each dog learns differently just as each person has their own personality. Each dog has their own personality and uh, just as if you were trying to teach uh, school age children or high school or even at the college level, each person's going to have something that they need different to understand the task. I think maybe the, the most common misconception is that a lot of these dogs do it because they're excited about doing it. It's to them, they get excited about work. A lot of people think that these dogs are very aggressive, and while that does happen, we do get some aggressive dogs, a lot of them are very friendly, <laughs> and they do want to play with their handlers, and they're just normal dogs at the end of the day who want attention and care, and a dog would normally want from a human being. They just understand that they've been taught certain behaviors that are play to them. Once the dogs complete their training, they're evaluated in their detection and patrol capabilities. Roughly 90% of the dogs that enter the program will graduate and be deployed to one of the many U.S. military bases around the world. There's a, a huge sense of mission accomplishment and pride when these dogs get out. I mean, we're out here very early in the morning and sometimes super late in the afternoon. And when you finally get to see these dogs qualify and you know that they're going to go out to 
a handler in the field and you know go on to a bigger mission there's there's a huge sense of pride there.